Welcome everyone. Today we're going to focus on breeding fish for profit. Could serve as an extra income source, could serve as your new business, could lead to you owning a fish store like me. The most common topics that come up are, I don't have a local fish store, this doesn't work for me. I breed fish and they won't buy them. When I get the little sarcastic voice going, that is just the, you know, it's going to play the role of the person asking a question. Maybe that's you, it was me at one point, it's not directed at anyone in particular. So. You know, a lot of people will start with, I've only got a local PetSmart, Petco, chain store, whatever you want to call it, and that's that's fine. But people tend to shut down there. They go, well, it's not for me. It is. If there is a fish store in your area and you've bought some fish, there is a market for fish. Now, you might not be a part of that market yet. You're not in that process of selling any of that, but it at least shows you that people are consuming fish. So then you just have to figure out how do you insert yourself into that process. Now, if someone can do it from across the world and get their fish sold in aquarium co-op or that local pet store that you have, there is room for you. You just have to figure out how you get in there. Let's say you've got five fish stores around you and they all refuse to work with you currently. And I say currently, that's a very important point, but let's say they just shut you down left and right. This was the quick list of places I thought I could sell tomorrow if I needed to. And I came up with it in under five minutes. I was I actually came up with this list while I was in the shower. And that would be eBay, Aquabid. Aquabid is the fish version of eBay, but you can sell fish on eBay. Offer up, Craigslist, your local fish stores, which we kind of, that's the one that everyone gravitates towards because that's the easiest one. I collected all my fish, I walked into the store, they gave me money, I became a millionaire, right? Local fish clubs. We have a thing on our website where most states, have local fish clubs. Some have five, six, seven clubs per state. Some have none. They have auctions. There's other club members. What a lot of people really want to do is they want to find one source to unload everything. And that's just not how business works typically. Reading the fish themselves and how to turn a profit on that, we've documented that fairly well in those videos. And there's lots of species to breed and that kind of stuff. So if you don't know how to breed a fish, that's an entirely different problem than selling the fish or Anything like that. The secret, I feel, is learning to actually develop a business. That's where I think I didn't do well enough at the beginning. Even though I have got a couple episodes that cover starting a business for breeding fish for profit, I think that's where people are going wrong. They don't know how much to sell fish for, or they'll even start a conversation with, I went into my local fish store, I brought them the fish, I asked how much they give me, and then they said they don't want them. If you're the person selling you need to have a price in mind. The person that makes the item has to set the price. There can be negotiations afterwards, but you can't start at a point where you're negotiating before. That just shows that you really don't know what you're doing. You don't know what the price should be. You haven't done research. You've never done this before. And in this instance, you need to be kind of overwhelming with confidence and showing that you do know what you're doing. And there's gonna be other factors to add to that to help with that. You know, if you walk in and you have angelfish to sell and you've got 600 of them at home at this point, if you've never sold one, you should at least have some idea what you might be able to get for them. We can't pay $5, we're paying 250 from our wholesaler. Then it would be up to you to kind of counter and be like, well, yes, but mine are local to our water. I've got a different strain. Mine are better because I could let them go for 350 if you're buying 24 at a time. But if you just go in and you go, how much will you give me for these angels? It's likely they'll say, we don't want them because they probably know, like I would know, when it starts out that way, it's too long of a conversation to be worth the time. So if it takes two hours between an employee and a potential seller to work out a deal. So you walk in, you don't bring the fish, you ask for interested, Ah, uh, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Then you come back with another trip and see they got pictures or the actual fish. Then we'd have to write up everything. Then we'd have to acclimate them. And that's gonna be a long process. Whereas ordering angels from a wholesaler takes roughly one tenth that time. A big opposition when you're selling to a store and kind of the same thing when you're selling online. You're forced to play the same game as your competitors. We get far too many people that want to make money but don't want to run the business side. And that's part of the problem. Whenever you're doing anything for a profit, it naturally, the definition becomes you're a business. And it could be as something as simple as I have a business card. Here is my stock list of what I sell. It might only be one thing on there. The bare minimum I would have 
would be a sheet of paper. It would have my contact info. So it might have my phone number, my email address, and then it would have what I have for sale. And what I would have for sale, even though I've only spawned angels once, it would be a minimum of three different sizes. Dime size, nickel size, quarter size, 50 cent size. It's not so much how many fish, it's all about the money. You almost want a structure when you're selling of, I want you to spend $50. The only difference is how many fish you're getting and the size they are, not whether you're spending $50 or not. Then I wanna cover how you pay me. And so I would have that it's only payment up front, and I would personally have that it's only cash. Now you might be willing to take credit, but you don't want to put that on the piece of paper because then, you know, if, if someone gives you an option and says, would you like cold hard cash or, oh, oh you'll take Reese's peanut butter cups and I can buy them at a discount, I'll give you those, right? With cash, if someone was to hand you physical cash, you have a, an additional step that you would have to, to do, in my opinion, to maintain this business aspect. And that would be uh, a receipt. Now, both PayPal and let's say Square or anything that's gonna allow you to take a credit card is going to spit out a receipt. And that's going to do a couple of things. One, gives you a chance to market to them. Two, gives you a chance to capture their email address. Three, it's gonna keep you on the up and up and be legal for both the store and you. And the most important part is that you're willing to take credit because a guy like me, I always wanna buy with a credit card because I'm gonna save 2%. Now there's gonna be other stores and things that might have to put it on credit because all their cash is tied up in something else. Whether it's to a store, whether it's to someone on Craigslist, whether it's selling online, is you want the minimal steps for you to get paid and your customer to be happy. Any steps you put in between there is leaving room for someone else to cut you out. Every fish that's in a store that you've bought ever, someone out there in the world made a profit on it. Likely two to three people made a profit on that fish by the time you bought it. Now, Dean, one of the reasons that we love him on camera is he's very charismatic. So that means we like listening to Dean, he seems knowledgeable, he comes off funny, all of those things are business skills that help you sell fish. Now, if you don't have any of that, you might need someone that's better at selling fish than you are. You might be the world's greatest breeder, but the world's worst salesman. Everyone can make this happen. So when you go and you visit someone like Greg Sage, he's selling fish at a profit, not an insanely big profit, but out of a basement in Colorado. And so that's where we need to go, okay, it's not that I can't, it's that I haven't figured out the way yet. So maybe all your local fishers will never buy a fish from you ever. Great, sell online, sell to their wholesalers. It doesn't matter you know, if it's a local economy, oh, someone's being laid off, you know, like a big, a big business, or uh, there's a new regulation about fish or anything like that. We have to be fluid and we have to change just like uh, anyone would in business, so. We hope you enjoyed this video. To watch another one just like this, click here.